Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. So uh, I guess technically a plug side chat, I don't know. But uh, you know, I wanted to, to talk a little bit about the Chevrolet Bolt EVs charging. Now this might end up being a, a bit of harsh words for GM, but not really because this is mostly meant to be more constructive. Uh, I know a lot of people you know, they voice their their concerns or a lot of times negativity uh, about the Chevrolet Bolt EV's charging speed and charging profile. And, you know, I wanted to, one, just sort of level set expectations, but two, I wanted to give GM a little bit of feedback and, uh, you know, in this sort of explain uh, to end users, one, why we're kind of seeing these slower DC fast charging speeds in the Bolt EV, and then two, kind of, present a, a proposal to GM, if you will, uh, for how they can actually remedy it, both for prior year, you know, 2017 to 2019 Bolt EVs, as well as for the 2020 uh, Bolt EV, and then possibly, uh, you know, depending if rumors are true, what we're hearing about the 2021 uh, Chevy Bolt EV. Uh, and that rumor being that people who attended uh, GM's uh, EV day claim that they were told that the 2021 Bolt EV would have the same charging speed as the 2020 Bolt EV. Uh, and so just to kind of dive into that a little bit, uh, the Bolt EV currently has a peak charging rate of about uh, 55 kilowatts. And uh, in the case of the uh, 2017 to 2019 Bolt EV, uh, that 55 kilowatt uh, peak rate then steps down at about 50%, sometimes a little sooner, sometimes a little later, uh, depending on temperature but it's still restricted to basically 150 amps maximum current that it can draw from a DC fast charger. The 2020 Bolt EV has that same 150 amp cap maximum current that it can draw from the DC fast charger. However, rather than having a step down charging rate, it has a charging curve. So essentially after it reaches about 50% battery, the uh, charging rate gradually drops over time. And what this gives the 2020 Bolt EV is a massive advantage in terms of charging to higher than 50 to 60%. Essentially, uh, as, a, as you charge higher and higher because it's a gradual taper to the charge, uh, you, you actually get to higher states of charge faster. So if you're charging to say 80% battery, uh, you're, you're actually saving 10 to 15 minutes uh, despite the fact that the 2020 Bolt EV's battery is 10% larger than the 2017 to 2019 Bolt EVs. So that's sort of the charging rate that you can expect. And part of this is dictated, right, by the battery itself. Uh, GM wanted to give you the most range they could give you uh, by using a higher energy density battery. It's thicker electrodes, and uh, based on the factory specifications for those battery cells, it's a 1C rate. So no matter what, you really can't charge a 60 kilowatt hour battery faster uh, than 60 kilowatts and you can't charge a 66 kilowatt hour battery like in the 2020 Bolt EV faster than 66 kilowatts. But notice those numbers are still higher than what we're currently seeing in the Chevy Bolt EV and that's because it appears that GM used a 150 amp CCS socket. So if that socket is rated at only 150 amps, it doesn't matter how fast the battery could potentially charge, you're limited by that 150 amp rate. And this is where I want to present a proposal to GM is why not offer existing Bolt EV owners the option to upgrade as well as providing future Bolt EV owners, 2021 Bolt EV owners, with a 200 amp or faster CCS char charging socket. And what this would allow is even if you're only able to draw, say, in a 2017 to 2019 Bolt EV, 170 amps from the charging station, that 200 amp rated socket would also allow the Bolt EV to start conditioning the battery 
right away. So essentially the way the Bolt EV is set up, it will draw additional power from the charger when it's available to run onboard systems, battery heater, battery cooler, air conditioning, heating, all of those things. So what you're allowing is Bolt EV owners the option of drawing additional power beyond their 60 or 66 kilowatt charging rate, max charging rate from the charger, uh, and essentially maximizing their time. Now I see this as a huge win-win for GM because if, especially if you're doing this retroactively and providing say 2017 to 2019 Bolt EV owners to not only upgrade to a 200 amp socket, you know, you're fixing that issue where owners have to lift the cord uh, during activation at some of these higher powered chargers. But you, you could also give the option of adopting that charging curve that the 2020 Bolt EV has. Uh, and then what this would do is essentially uh, shorten most charging sessions by easily 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes uh, for Bolt EV owners. But it's also a win for a lot of the dealerships and the service centers because this is an optional upgrade, say it's a $1,000, $1,500 package that an existing Bolt EV owner can go into a service center, a GM dealership, and have them update their car, right? Replace the hardware, update the vehicle, and you drive away with a much more capable electric vehicle that you than you had before. And this is the other way that GM could really leverage this because I'm guessing they still have tons and tons of those 150 amp rated CCS sockets. Well, you could also do a little bit of distinguishing between trim levels because when I bought my Bolt EV, None of the features that were available in the Bolt EV Premier uh, were worth it to me to upgrade, so I got the LT instead. However, had there been an option for a 200 amp CCS socket instead of the 150 amp CCS socket, that is something that would have gotten me to purchase a Premier level trim over the LT level trim. So and again, another sort of win-win where you're giving the option for this upgrade that maybe a dealership can do after the fact and they can make money through their service center, but it's also a good way of upselling to the higher trim level because you're offering more of a feature, more of a functionality. And so someone who isn't going to DC fast charge a lot, isn't going to use their car for long trips a lot, they're not really out anything by going with a 150 amp socket uh, instead of a 200 amp socket. But for someone like me who goes on long trips, leverages high speed charging a lot, that's a big win. That's worth paying an extra $500,000, $1,500. And that's really your selling point, right? As you offer it at the point of sale, maybe for a discount, but if someone wants to come in later and update, well, then it's gonna cost them more. They're gonna to have to pay the dealership service center to do it, but again, now you're cycling these cars that you know rarely, if ever, go into the dealership for any sort of service and maintenance anyway. Now you're giving these dealerships another way of sort of making some income, uh, supporting electric vehicles, getting them a little bit more on board with it because they also see an additional sort of income path. So that's, that's my proposal to GM is, hey, look, Great, you got us a long range EV for cheaper than anybody else, sooner than anybody else. Awesome. Now give us the opportunity to enhance it, to improve it, uh, and it's a win-win-win across the board. I guarantee you, you pull uh, Chevy Bolt EV owners who have 2017 to 2019 and say, would you be willing to pay $1,000 to $1,500 to increase your charging speed by 10 to 20% as well as providing a charging curve with an updated BMS or whatever instead of the step-down rate that we currently have? I think you'll see most Bolt EV owners will jump on that, right? You're talking about saving 10, 15, 20 minutes per charging stop, traveling faster, uh, being more capable, putting something like the 2020 Bolt EV uh, definitely on level uh, ground with things like the Hyundai Kona Electric, the Kia Niro EV, uh, you know, the Kia Soul EV, those sorts of things. So uh, anyway, um, 
if you're a Bolt EV owner uh, or a prospective EV owner, what do you think this, you know, does this proposal sound like a good idea? Is it something that you would use if you're a Chevy Bolt EV owner? Is it something that you uh, hope that GM offers? I mean, would you be willing to go in and pay, like I said, $500, $1,000, $1,500 to have your charging socket, charging hardware updated so that now you can charge a bit faster uh, with a, a smoother charging curve rather than a step down and, and drawing additional power uh, from the charger even when you're charging at the battery's maximum charging power. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and uh, thank you for watching.